the comedy arts and the case and the mondays how's it going everybody welcome to a case of the mondays episode one i'm sports card walt so the card maniac i thought we'd try a little something different uh, every monday i'd like to put out some kind of video for you guys just to kind of go over What's happening in Major League Baseball? Obviously, we have spring training going on right now. It's been about a week into spring training. So I thought we'd get a kind of an idea of what's happening so far after a week, uh, which teams are facing some injuries, which players have had a good week, which players didn't have so good of a week, and try to keep it in terms of maybe the guys who are in top 100 prospect lists, and maybe some guys who've had rookie cards within the last couple of years uh, maybe just kind of keep it ultra modern so anywhere from 2018 to today um so let's get started um we'll break this down by division so first for the national league east a uh, couple things to report obviously ronald Acuna jr uh, currently day-to-day -day with a knee injury uh, should be ready to go by opening day i'm not really sure if he's going to see any more spring training time, I wouldn't think so. Uh, they're ramping him up probably, hopefully, to start the season on time. Uh, but just something to keep an eye out on. Uh, Kodai Senga for the New York Mets. Unfortunately, it's going to be out for three weeks with that shoulder injury and could be longer depending upon how that goes. He's been shut down for those three weeks, so after those three weeks, we'll see how he kind of progresses. And obviously, Ronnie Mauricio, also for the Mets, who has rookie cards in 2024 Top Series 1. Uh, and tore his ACL uh, with winter ball in the Dominican Republic. He is out for the season, unfortunately, for the Mets. Uh, moving to the NL Central, only thing really to report is Matt McClain. He had an oblique injury, but he's set to return sometime later this week or by the weekend for his first spring training games. Nothing to really report in the National League West. Uh, for the American League East, Samuel Basalo, who is on MLB Pipeline's Top 100, who we've spoken about in a previous video, He's been out with an elbow injury. He's starting to take batting practice, I believe, today. But I don't really think he's going to see any spring training games. Uh, obviously, he should start the season in AA for Baltimore. Vaughn Grissom, who Boston, who the Boston Red Sox got in a trade with Atlanta in the offseason. Uh, looks like he's going to be out for opening day with a groin injury. So watch out for that. Uh, pretty decent former prospect uh, for Atlanta. Who obviously got traded. Didn't really have a spot for him there with the Braves. Should see some decent playing time with Boston once he comes back from injury. Of course, one of the bigger names as a prospect is Jason Dominguez. He, of course, has that elbow, in elbow injury, which he suffered late last season. Uh, won't be back probably until June, I believe, at the earliest. And hopefully he comes back strong. Top prospect to watch out for, obviously, for a big market team in New York. Uh, for the AL Central... Nothing I could see that's really uh, noteworthy. Bo Naylor, who had rookie cards last year for the Cleveland Guardians, is just day to day with a back injury. Nothing too crazy. And for the American League West, for the Texas Rangers, uh, Josh Young um, obviously came on strong last year for the Rangers into the playoffs, a World Series champion. Uh, out for about two weeks with that calf injury. I think they expect him to start spring training games maybe on March 14th. So look out for that. And that'll wrap it up for the injury report after the first week of spring training. Now let's move on to kind of like a hot and not cheat um, so far as we move through this first week of spring training. Obviously a very, very, very small sample size, right? With with this seven or eight games that most teams have played. And obviously many of these players have only played in maybe half of those games, maybe three or four games at the, at the most at this point. Uh, what I have listed here, obviously we'll just go quickly through a division uh, red arc players are in the top MLB Pipeline's 100 prospect list. Uh, the players I have in blue had rookie card logo cards uh, last year, and then we'll have rookie card logo cards this year. And all other players marked uh, have at least had rookie cards uh, as far back as 2018. Uh, and then some players who aren't on MLB Pipeline's top 100 prospect list haven't been called up yet to the big leagues. Um, but could very well be called up uh, within the next year. So first for the National League East, uh, for the Braves, Michael Harris had a very, very good week, went 7 for 16, a couple pair of home runs. Uh, but also for the Braves, Jared Kelenic, who they got in a trade with Seattle, just 1 for 18. 
a player just to kind of keep an eye an eye on uh, a former big time prospect for New York. Uh, the Mets uh, obviously went to Seattle for a couple of years, just very inconsistent, battled through some injuries, just could never really live up to the hype, right? So now with Atlanta, kind of a fresh start, hoping to make a roster spot. Uh, obviously, one for 18 is not ideal for, for how he wanted to begin spring, but obviously it's still kind of early. Uh, hopefully he can kind of surround and make some impact for them. And hopefully maybe his card values will will start becoming relevant again. Uh, for the New York Mets, uh, obviously, uh, um, Pete Alonso, uh, self-explanatory, big star for New York. He, he went four for 10 with a home run. Uh, Luis Angel Cunha, uh, top MLB prospect, went three for eight, three for eight. Excuse me. Uh, Jet Williams, also a pretty hyped prospect for the Mets, uh, went two for six with a stolen base. Drew Gilbert, however, just went one for nine. Uh, some of these prospects probably won't see a whole lot of playing time going forward as we move deeper and deeper into spring training. You'll start seeing your regulars play a little bit more often. We've already seen a ton of guys get reassigned to minor league camp. A couple of them you'll see later on in this list. Uh, so just something to just keep it a watch out for. Uh, some of the prospects that you're really excited to see uh, probably won't be playing much longer. Probably will get reassigned to minor league camp and they'll you know begin their seasons in a little over a month. Uh, for the Washington Nationals, we had James Wood just go bonkers last week, right? Nine for 19, uh, three home runs, the stolen base. Doesn't mean he's going to get, you know, doesn't mean he's going to make the team. Uh, I believe he's still only 21 years old. Uh, obviously, we saw him in MLB Pipeline's top 100 list, but could very well make Major League Baseball at some point this season, as long as, especially if he's, you know, mashing like this. But again, very, 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 very small sample size. Um, conversely, also for the Nats, Dylan Cruz, who we will see when my Part 7 video comes out for the Top 100 Prospect list. Just two for 11, but had a couple of stolen bases. Uh, a couple other guys to watch out for, uh, in my opinion. Robert Hassel, who was not on MLB Pipeline's Top 100 list, but could actually be on a few lists. Uh, went 5 for 12, had a very uneven season last year, but has all the makings of a guy to, to easily make the team ahead of James Wood, just because he's a little bit further advanced. Uh, had a home run, couple steals, just a name to watch out for that maybe makes the team or maybe gets called up a little sooner than James Wood. Uh, then, of course, C.J. Abrams, who I'm very high on. Uh, this will be coming into his third season in the bigs after a brief stint in 2022. Obviously, a former San Diego Padre, traded, I believe, in the Soto deal. Uh, last week in spring training, went four for nine. With a home run, but a lot of speed with CJ. Three steals last week, so watch out for him, especially in fantasy baseball drafts um, as well. But hopefully he can continue building upon what he did last year. And he could be a sneaky uh, player to invest in that could pay dividends uh, at some point this season. Only one player for the Phillies making this list, unfortunately, Bryson Stott. Didn't have a great week, just three for 17 uh, with a triple. Uh, looking for decent things out of Bryson. Not really sure if he's ever really going to be a superstar player for Philadelphia. A fringe all-star possibility for Bryson. Um, not really sure if he's going to go any further past what his ceiling might already be. But certainly a player to kind of keep an eye on. For the NL Central, a few prospects in the top 100 making this list in various ways. Uh, Owen Casey for the Cubs went 9 for 17 with the home run. Again, just somebody to keep an eye on. Uh, I spoke very highly of him uh, during our prospect breakdown. Henry Davis for the Pirates had a very great week, going six for 15 with three home runs. Uh, should definitely be a uh, starting player for Pittsburgh this season. Termar Johnson had a good week, six for 13, two home runs. Again, somebody who probably won't make the team quite yet, but somebody to keep an eye on uh, in the minors this year. And what more can be said about Ellie De La Cruz? Went six for 16 with a 470-foot home run. Obviously, he's in 2024 top series one as for rookie cards. Uh, and then we have Edwin Arroyo, um, also for the Reds, went 5 for 10 with a steal. A lot of hype around Edwin Arroyo. Prospectability is very high, I would say, for him. Uh, another player to keep an eye on. Won't make the team for Cincinnati, but you know, maybe later this year or early next year. Um, a not-so-good week for Jackson Churio. Obviously, big hype surrounding this top five prospect in baseball. Only went 4 for 20. Uh, might be pressing a little bit. He already got signed to the big contract. 
should it should probably make the team, uh, I would imagine, but uh, probably pressing. And obviously, it's still you know we're only one week into spring training. We'll have to see how you know the next couple of weeks uh, turn out for him. A pair of Cardinals who had rookie cards last year: Jordan Walker and Nolan Gorman. Uh, not off to a great start. Again, just one week of spring training. And O'Neill Cruz for the Pirates went two for 11 with a steal. Obviously, he's coming back from a, a fairly uh, big injury last year for Pittsburgh, but hopefully he can bounce back. He showed some great things uh, in late 2022 and early 2023 before the injury. Moving to the National League West. Uh, on the hot list side, we have Andy Pages for the Dodgers. Uh, like they need any more talent, right? But uh, Andy went six for 15, a couple of home runs. Just got optioned down to minor league camp. Imagine that won't be for too long. They had uh, Jason Hayward, who's been in the league, feels like, for forever. Uh, I can't imagine Jason holding that outfield position, that starting outfield position for much longer. And obviously, I believe Andy Page should probably get first crack at that roster spot if and when uh, Jason Hayward either doesn't play well to start the season or they just move on from him altogether. Obviously, you have James Outman, another Dodger outfielder. He went six for 14, two home runs, three steals. Uh, already advanced. He's 27 years old. Rookie card last year. A pretty good player for James. He's never going to be like a big superstar, but a solid player for, for LA. It's a team with just crazy amount of talent. Uh, Jordan Beck went eight for 16 with a steal for the Rockies. Uh, you know, we went over Jordan in one of our prospect breakdown videos for Colorado. Uh, Pretty good prospect, somebody to keep an eye on this year for sure. We have Ezekiel Tovar making my hot list, seven for 13, two home runs, a rookie card last year. Tovar, I uh, actually like him a lot. Hopefully he has a good season uh, for the Rockies. There's there's a lot to like with Tovar. He's got some power, he's got some speed, and overall just a really solid player. For the not list side, unfortunately, Jordan Lawler's only gone two for 12. Again, super small sample size though. I'm gonna say that a lot. Uh, at least for this first video, first episode that we have here. One home run for Lawler. Uh, it's not looking great for him to make the team at the camp. They do have Perdomo, obviously, starting at shortstop. Uh, they brought on board uh, Eduardo uh, Suarez for the Red, from the Reds uh, to play third. Uh, not really a spot for Lawler. Uh, they have Blaze Alexander, uh, a prospect that's not on any anybody's top 100, but Actually, he's a pretty decent player. Got hurt late last year. I look for Blaze to probably make the team out of camp as a backup infielder more so than Lawler. They probably want to have Lawler just play every day. So he'll probably start the season at Reno. Uh, Marco Luciano for the Giants. He used to be a bigger prospect. Uh, obviously, he's still on the prospect list for the top 100. Uh, hasn't gotten a hit yet. Again, just you know, a couple games for him. Not really a high on Luciano. We'll have to kind of see how he begins the season with San Francisco. And Adele Amador, also for the Rockies, not a great start. Three for 14 with a steal. Obviously, he's a top 100 prospect for Colorado and is still probably a year away, I'd say. Moving over to the American League, the American League East. Uh, what more can be said about Vlad Jr.? He went six for 13 with a home run. Obviously, his rookie cards are back in 2019. Uh, uh, Colton Kowser for the Orioles is making a case to break camp with the team and be a starter. Uh, as others have struggled. He went four for 11 with three of those hits being home runs and stole a base. Um, we have Curtis Mead for the Rays, who's on the top 100 prospect, went six for 15. Rafael Devers, who has rookies way back in 2018, tops update, uh, went five for 11 with two home runs, dispelling any uh, issues about his weight uh, that were made uh, memes on X before spring training started. We have Anthony Volpe for the Yankees, a uh, big-time prospect last year, got caught up, struggled a little bit as expected, still brought a lot of speed. Uh, he went 6 for 15 with two steals. It'll be an interesting year to see how Volpe does to justify some of his card prices. Uh, can he hit for power a little bit? Can he hit, period, because I believe he only hit about 215, 220 last year for New York. A lot of hype surrounding Volpe. Let's hope he can have a good season. Spencer Jones. Uh, a top 100 prospect also for the Yankees went six for 13 with a home run. Don't really think he's going to get much more playing time for Spencer. If he hasn't already been reassigned to minor league camp, I expect it probably will be within the next couple of days. And of course, Juan Soto, uh, six for nine, three home runs. 
uh, rookie cards, obviously, back in 2018. Uh, for all intents and purposes, Juan Soto should have a monster season for New York, especially in that ballpark. Uh, you look at his numbers last year in a park in San Diego, on a surface, you wouldn't think it all that well. And I was looking further into his numbers, and they actually were pretty good. He's His walk rate is still incredible. Uh, his power is still there. Again, with that ballpark, with that division, uh, uh, I expect Juan Soto to just have a massive season. And now that Otani is in the National League, Soto might be a you know a decent pick for MVP, I would think. Uh, the not so list or not so hot uh, part of this list for the uh, American League East, we have a Relvis Martinez prospect for the Blue Jays in the top 100. Just went two for 12. A uh, Heston uh, Kerstad for the Orioles. As we see with Colton Kowser having a, a great start, kind of wanting to get that roster spot, we have Heston Kerstad, who only went three for 18. Yeah, I could see very well a situation where Kowser makes the team and Heston starts in AAA, or vice versa by the time, you know, this by the time episode two next Monday comes out, uh, we could be seeing a much different scenario. Jackson Holiday, uh, it is no secret that he is baseball's number one prospect if you want to consider him or Jack or jackson cheerio or maybe even yamamoto and the dodgers if you're going the international route for counting that uh, holiday just went four for 17 obviously it's early uh don't think holiday's making the team out of spring quite yet uh junior Caminero for the rays three for 13 with a home run uh but he should probably make the team i would think with tampa bay uh even obviously with the fact that wander franco wander franco is no longer around for them Moving to the AL Central, the hot list side, we have Kyle Manzardo for the Guardians, went four for nine. Chase DeLauder also for the Guardians, went, is just four for eight uh, with a home run. I didn't mean to say just four for eight, just has eight at-bats, but four hits in those eight at-bats. Both players, big-time prospects for Cleveland. Uh, possibly, I would think Manzardo probably makes a team over DeLauder just because DeLauder's age and hasn't quite played a lot of minor league games yet but that's not to say that DeLauder can't get a call at some point this season. Nick Prado uh, for the Kansas City Royals went 6 for 14 with a home run and a steal. Very, very difficult path Prado has to make it a team. Obviously, Vinny Pasquantino is their first baseman. Vinny didn't have a good start, as you can see, going 2 for 13. I would think Pasquantino probably gets first crack at being their everyday first baseman coming back from injury. But hey, if Vinny struggles... You know, Prado has a lot of talent, and Prado could definitely make a push for that spot by the end of spring or at least a month into the season. Chase Young, uh, Josh's little brother for the Tigers, went 4 for 10. Another guy I kind of like for the Twins who had rookie cards in Tops Update 2023 is Edward Julian for the Minnesota Twins, went 7 for 16 with a home run and a steal. He was a very fun player to use uh, in DraftKings Daily Fantasy just because of the steals, just because of his ability to just hit over 300, it feels like, for Minnesota. Uh, just brought, a, brought on a lot of points uh, in spots where you, you wouldn't think people would use him. For, uh, Royce Lewis, another Grand Slam. That's all he apparently hits are Grand Slams, but he went 4 for 10 uh, with one home run being that Grand Slam. Uh, Royce Lewis cards obviously are in 2022 products. Just needs to stay healthy. The kid just needs to stay healthy. Uh, he's got all the talent in the world. Just can't seem to stay healthy. This is a guy who can hit 30 home runs for Minnesota this year. Maybe even 30, 35 home runs. If he can get, you know, 450 to 550 at-bats. Uh, he's got that much uh, pop. And um, this would be cool to see if he can just stay healthy this year for Minnesota. Really fun player to watch. On the, the not list side... Look, he's in the top 100 prospect list. I don't really like him too much as a player. Uh, I don't want to speak bad about players. Uh, let me rephrase. Uh, Rokio, I'm not hugely high on. Let's just put it that way. One, one for 12. That's not to justify anything. Uh, obviously, it's just 12 at-bats. Um, was a rookie last year for Cleveland Guardians. Uh, we'll have to see. He has a really good hit tool. The problem is he doesn't really have a whole lot of power or speed. So... Card collecting wise, I should say. Baseball wise, Brian could do very well for Cleveland this year. Uh, card collecting wise, not really someone, in my opinion, you'd want to invest any money into. Uh, 
Pasquantino, we just mentioned earlier, uh, just two for 13. He's coming back from injury. Uh, Spencer Torkelson, two for 11 last week. In my opinion, it's a really important season for Spencer. He's shown so much inconsistency. This is a guy who can hit 40 home runs easily, but is he going to hit 230 with those 40 home runs, or can he hit like 260, 270 with those 40 home runs? He's got all the ability to do the latter. Uh, it's just the inconsistency for him. Hopefully, he has a big season. Watching out for Spencer Torkelson. He has rookie cards in 2022. Uh, and Yamando Rodriguez got a few at-bats for, for Minnesota. He is on the top 100 prospect list. Two for 11 with a home run. Probably won't see much more playing time uh, moving forward uh, as he gets reassigned to minor league camp. And finally, we have the American League West. Uh, Zach uh, Galoff for the Oakland A's went seven for 18 with two home runs. Probably one of their best players on, on a, uh, a team that's starved for talent. Uh, but a pretty good player. Uh, was a prospect last year. Was a rookie, has a rookie card last year. He was, he had, he's one of those rare occurrences where he had his first year cards in 2013 Bowman. Uh, and then actually has his first rookie cards in 2024. Excuse me. Top Series 1. Uh, Cole Young, prospect for the Mariners, went 5 for 12 with a home run. Again, he could probably go hit five home runs this spring. Uh, he's not going to make the team. He's still young, no pun intended. But somebody to keep an eye out. Obviously, we've spoken about him already in our top 100 prospect breakdown. A very exciting player. And uh, it won't be long before Cole Young reaches the majors, in my opinion. And, of course, Wyatt Langford. Six for 17, three home runs for the world champion Rangers. Another fun, exciting player to watch out for. Again, a player who can hit 10 home runs probably isn't going to make the team uh, quite yet. But again, he's a little bit more advanced uh, why it is. And you know, there's not there's not out of the realm of possibility that Wyatt Langford somehow finds his way onto the Texas Rangers before the end of this coming season. And on the not so hot list side, uh, just a few catchers. Uh, Logan O'Hoppy for the Los Angeles Angels, three for 17 with a home run and a steal. Former, this is a former Philly prospect who got traded to Los Angeles last year. Rookie card last year. Uh, Yander Diaz for the Astros went two for 15 with a home run. I uh, expect kind of big things out of Yander this year for Houston. Had a really good rookie season last year, kind of under the radar a little bit. And um, should get quite, should get a fair, decent amount of playing time as their starting catcher. And Shea Langliers for Oakland, just three for 17 with the home run. Uh, also, actually, another catcher. These were all catchers, excuse me, for, for this uh, not list as far as this division concerned. Oakland A's, not a lot of talent. Shea's going to get every opportunity to play basically every day as their starting catcher. Uh, former top 100 prospect for Atlanta uh, was traded to Oakland. Not too super high on Shea. Hopefully, he has a good season uh, for them. Right, guys, that'll wrap up uh, episode one. This is going to be called Case of Mondays. I actually should just call these shows uh, Spreadsheet Baseball because that's all we kind of use here on this channel of spreadsheets. Uh, fortunately, that's all that's all I have kind of time for as we try to get this channel going. I try to just give you guys some information on where you can kind of see how your players are doing. Uh, as, this, as this show kind of goes every Monday, hopefully, I know we're just recording this on Monday, so this will be out tomorrow on Tuesday, March 5th. Um, hopefully, moving forward, I'll have these videos recorded on a Sunday night so that it can be released on Monday, hence the name, Case of the Mondays. Uh, but hopefully, this kind of show will kind of progress week to week uh, with some values as far as some of these players' cards are going as we progress throughout the year. I don't foresee it's always going to be like a hot or not sheet. It'll probably just be a selection of players how their card values are going, how they're going through the season, whether they're in the bigs or in the minors, kind of keeping it with the ultra-modern era. So anything basically from 2018 uh, to, to today. So watch out for that. Every Basically every Monday, a case of the Mondays, we'll break down how things are going in Major League Baseball. That's all I have time for today. I appreciate the like and subscribe, guys. You have no idea what it would mean to this channel, to myself, as we try to kickstart something really fun for everybody. See you guys next time.